you want to get into astrophotography, don't make one of the classic mistakes that so many people make. And that's that they go out and they buy big. Don't buy big. Anything with a focal length longer than 600 millimeters is just too long to start with. Bigger is better. As far as it will get you out of this sport really quick. Start with something wide. Wide field astrophotography. And, and here's a little kind of false thing that I've heard out there. Wide field astrophotography, you're going to really quickly run out of things to photograph. That's not true. Um, there's a 100 millimeter lens on this camera. And there are a lot of things to photograph on there. I'd probably say that there's at least 50 to 60 different objects in the sky that can be photographed with this. And it will keep you going. It'll get you hungry for more. It's easy to use. It's easy to set up. It has the shorter focal length that makes it easier. It also can be polar aligned. That guy back there, he cannot be polar aligned. Polar alignment is necessary in order to track the sky. And now that I've kind of ranted a little bit about why I love this thing, I'm not really sure if that's called a rant, but uh, let me kind of take you through some of the details of this thing, uh, little extra accessories that I have on here that kind of make it a little bit easier to use. So just about everything that you see here that's, that has a wire on it is really optional, okay? These sky trackers, they come with batteries. You can put four AA batteries in it and run it that way. I use rechargeables, um, but occasionally I get a lack of reliability from those rechargeables. There's a five volt DC USB port right here, which can be attached to something like a battery pack. And this is kind of one of my most recent additions. This is like a $35 battery pack I bought off of Amazon. And it gives me a lot more power for a lot longer time. And I have it Velcroed right here under the tripod leg. And I also have it attached to my uh, dew here, which will keep dew off your lens. Now, if you use a lens shield, you can kind of get away without a dew he heater. But, you know, really, these dew heaters only cost like 20 bucks. They're pretty cheap. And, uh, and I use that too. And this thing, it really keeps it good and warm. It keeps the dew off of it. It keeps the frost off of it in the wintertime. Uh, so the next thing you're going to see here, this is uh, the most prominent thing in this pure point of view. Uh, this is a power brick that I purchased for my Olympus camera. And what I like about having this is that it gives me reliability as far as like power all night long. Uh, I've noticed that my batteries in the summertime, they're good. They keep two batteries in this camera. This is my EM1. It will keep it going all night long, but in the wintertime, uh, not so much. As it gets cold, those batteries, sometimes when I'm out here when it's in the teens, Fahrenheit, uh, it will, uh, the battery will last me about half an hour each. So they, they, they go really quick when they start getting cold. So this gives me like nice power, power reliability. It also allows you to remove the batteries from the camera, which will make this entire rig lighter. And when you want to put a bigger lens on here, like a telephoto, um, that's kind of an important thing. So another little accessory that I have here, and, and this is again an optional thing. Uh, one of the really nice things about Olympus cameras is that they have a built-in kind of like a self timer in there that you can sequentially take picture after picture after picture um, up to a minute long. I wish that that was lengthened a little bit longer because then it wouldn't really require me buying this, but still this thing is handy. So if you want to start taking exposures that are longer than a minute, you'll need to get one of these. This is a Pixel Pro and I bought it. It's designed for the Olympus camera. Uh, it's one of the wireless ones. You can't get a wired one anymore. Um, I kind of wish that you, did, you could. But uh, the newer EM1 Mark IIs have, uh, they don't use the USB port to connect to the remote controller. There's actually now a little uh, jack on the opposite side, which is nice because it frees up a port. So if you wanted to uh, basically download live your, cam your pictures through a USB port into your Mac Pro, um, you could do that and do longer exposures. With this guy here, you know, we're able to do exposure sometimes eight minutes long. Uh, just doing a really good polar alignment. Um, some other things that I added, like I actually made the counterweight and shaft. Um, I always keep my screen tilted outwards, and one of the reasons why I do that is because the back of the camera here, uh, this is where the sensor is. It allows the sensor to cool off, so as long as this thing's away from it, um, it kind of keeps heat managed a little bit better. 